Peace family, it's your brother Jay Speaks, and I'm back with another video. Now today I want to talk about a um, story I heard about in the news pertaining to a brother that just got out of jail and was shot 64 times, I believe, and they they also shot the uh, his mother and his sister. Now, I, there's not a lot going on with this story, but I feel like It's the perfect opportunity to just talk about where our community is and how we can change it. Now, I believe this story is from, the brother is from Chicago, and, you know, there's a lot of media coverage and a whole bunch of things being said about Chicago each and every day, each and every week, because they want to portray us as savages. So whenever we... Whenever the police kill us, you know, they'll look at stuff like what's going on in Chicago and, you know, be like, well, they, they kill each other every day and this, this and that or whatever. And I just wanted to uh, speak on that because it just sounds crazy. The brother being shot 64 times, shot at 64 times, and, you know, he was pronounced dead uh, as soon as he got to the hospital. I think his mother was hitting the arm, sister was hitting the leg. But this happened as soon as he got out of the jail. Now, it's not public knowledge for people to know exactly what time people get out of jail. So it's very suspicious that as soon as he steps foot into, quote unquote, freedom, people are there ready for him to just, you know, lay him out. And I just think that that's crazy for that to even happen. Like, where do we get as a society and as a people to where I want to kill you and I don't care who's around you. I go to a prison that's supposed to be, or a prison or a jail that's supposed to be heavily guarded to try to end your life. And I think this happened a couple of days ago and nobody has been arrested. You know, they ain't they spoke about any footage or anything like that. And it's just interesting how we play a huge part in our own demise you know a lot of this stuff is systematic and we are just pawns in a bigger game but at the same time they use the most damaged and hurt of us to come and use as weapons against everybody you have to think about what would make you want to risk your life and your freedom to get back at somebody else? We've reached a point to where these brothers don't care who's there, who's witnessing it, who going to tell, you know, law enforcement, none of that. They just letting off on the people that they see. Now, you can say that, you know, this might have been, you know, a government sanctioned attack or you know, some type of inside job. But at the end of the day, what is in the mind of the shooter? How hurt and how damaged are you to want to kill somebody and risk everything just to see them dead? You don't care who's, you don't care if they mama there, they sister there, they brother, they son, you just want to end them. Now, nobody is born full of hate like that. We are made that way through the relationships that we encounter in our everyday life. Somebody that you love, somebody that you trusted, somebody that you believed in had to do something to you to where you get to the point to where you see hate in your heart and you believe that everything that you do, even the negativity is righteous. Everything that you engage in has some form of substance, regardless of whether you know, you right or wrong, you do it just because you feel like you can do it. And at the end of the day, we are suffering because our people are hurt and damaged. Let's talk about how, yes, you know, we've been systematically oppressed. Yes, we've been used for instruments for our own destruction. But what is in your heart to where you say, let me be used and let me be an instrument of my own destruction. How do you get to the point to where you don't mind 
ending your brother's life, regardless of who put the gun in your hand? What makes you pull the trigger? What makes you decide to be an agent of your own demise? That all comes from how we grow up, how we are treated, and how we treat others. At the end of the day, no one is born evil, especially not us. We are some of the most damaged and hurt people, and all we've ever tried to do was be loved and be loved by our oppressor and try to be as positive, as great as we can. We constantly have this voice in the back of our head to see ourselves as our enemy instead of who our enemy really is and has always been. A lot of these brothers are committing murder and robbing and stealing and, you know, raping and just committing all types of evil to their own people. But they wouldn't dare do that to anybody else. They wouldn't dare go up to somebody or a police officer, somebody that kill one of their family members and do that to them. You'll ride on your brother over fifty dollars, over a hundred dollars, or but just because somebody told you to. We have to recognize how hurt and damaged we are, and how many things that we have put ourselves through to even get to the point where we want to kill ourselves and kill everybody that looks like us and have no type of hate for anybody else. We have truly been hypnotized into thinking that we are our worst enemy. When we look in the mirror, we hate ourselves more than we hate anything else. So a lot of times when we killing each other, we killing ourselves at the end of the day. The more and more evil you commit, the more you become evil. The more and more acts of violence you commit, the more violent you become. So we slowly and slowly turn into the very things that we say that we are against. We talk about, you know, stopping the violence and creating peace, but we have to get to the root of these problems. Who made you like that? Hurt people hurt people at the end of the day. We are all made the way we are. God would never create us to be an evil people. We are righteous by nature, but we have constantly been sabotaged and hurt and damaged to the point to where we do it ourselves. We don't need nobody. You know, the, 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 the white man ain't doing it no more. It's us. This system, this government, yeah, they play a huge part in everything that goes down, but we're the ones that decide at the end of the day that we are going to make these choices, that we are going to sacrifice our lives just to get at our own people. Now, I don't know what this brother did to... Warn people to even come for him and try to kill him. You know, it could have been gang related or anything of that nature. But at the end of the day, we have to be able to come to some type of resolution to where we aren't just murdering each other in front of government owned facilities. Incriminating ourselves for the sake of the quote unquote. Hell of it. We have to get to the point to where we are doing right by others and we are creating the environment to where things like this are shunned upon and won't even happen. Because there's a lot of people that agree and understand and glorify this type of behavior. And now we got younger people looking at issues like this, retaliating and Glorifying this type of lifestyle Now we don't know what type of Repercussions are going to come from This brother being shot and killed His mother and sister being shot at Now it just turns into a bigger thing And the circle never ends The circle of violence continues Because nobody is getting to the root Of why these brothers are doing what they're doing We have to get to the point to where we don't allow ourselves to be controlled by others. We don't let our emotions get the best of us to where we lose control and lose sight of why we're here and what we need to do in life. At the end of the day, there's never, there never should be a story like this on the news. There never should be nothing like this happening. 
we shouldn't. Like I said, I understand that, you know, it's rough in these, you know, type of lifestyles where people are, you know, affiliated with gangs and in these type of organizations that do things like this. But at the end of the day, we are the instruments of our own destruction. And the more and more of these violences we commit, the deeper and deeper the hole gets. There are definitely government sanctioned attacks and actions being in place. I would not deny that. But for a young brother to decide in his own heart to be a part of this, we have to kill that mentality. There has to be more and more in-depth reviews and understanding of what's in our heart and our brains to cause ourselves to turn on our brothers. And like I said, there's still more being developed about this. I don't know everything, and I don't want to speak directly on what happened. I just want to talk about solutions and how the mindset of someone wanting to end another brother's life in front of his family, in front of a jail, in front of a prison. You, it's just it's crazy just thinking about somebody risking everything. And, it was, and, I, and I know in the story it says it was a lot of people there. It wasn't just one gunman. So you have a whole group of men who see themselves risking everything to get at somebody. Like I said, thank y'all for listening. This is Jay Speaks. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Love y'all. Peace.